tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and felines. I wanted to see something like somebody do just do a face plant. Right. Into the mashed potatoes. I'm so happy he got back to his family. Poor little pioneer. He was yeah. lost on the Oregon Trail for so long. <laughs> You're taking that cottage core, grandma core, <laughs> McDonald's, grandma McFlurry aesthetic mm-hmm. way too far. You can shoot me in the face because I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for your chest. Okay, you ready? I'm not even gonna aim. IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. From beautiful Podcast Park. (laughs) Two people will get that reference. Yeah, and I think you're one of them. Probably. No (laughs) idea who the other one would be. Uh, Let the algorithm know you're into this sort of thing. Click the star or the heart or the like or the thumbs up or the subscribe. There's a YouTube subscription link in this post. And thanks so much for being here on tonight's episode. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent sending a kid to school, here's one thing not to do. A kitty cat makes it all the way from Yellowstone National Park to California. Ooh, was he trying to be a movie star? Maybe. I love that. The Pets of Downtown Mural gets a little update. Ooh, love that. Tupperware bankrupt. Uh, Pete who's Diddy. Surprised? Probably won't spend too much time on that. Uh, Pocatello has a new logo and slogan. And uh, the best four ninety nine you can spend, especially after you get potatoes at Shelly's Spud Days, if you got those over the weekend. Uh, We're excited for this show. We're more excited for this show than people are for the new McDonald's at the corner of Lincoln and Ammon. Oh, that's what's going in there? Yeah, that's just sprouting right up, isn't it? Nice. Well, I feel like all of the construction has been lately. Yeah. You know, like there are all these apartments being built everywhere. I feel like stuff's just flying up. Mm -hmm. Makes you kind of wonder about the integrity of it. (laughs) One day we'll get a Trader Joe's, Brad. One day we'll get (sighs) a Chipotle. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait for that. I still can't believe we don't have an in and out too. I mean, we're so close now. Right. Didn't they get one in Logan or did I dream that? No, I think they did. And you know, it's so slow going. We've mentioned before, the reason in and outs expansion is so slow going is mm-hmm. they keep it all in the family. Yeah. And when they have more kids uh, and kids marry into and have nieces and mm-hmm. nephews and stuff, then they build more locations. Right. Boise's got one. Mm-hmm. We can't be too far behind. I have to assume we're not, right? Yeah. Yeah. Excited. Uh, straight to the comments and follow-ups? Let's do it. First, I'll, I'll apologize in advance. I've got a little cold. <laughs> i got the sexy yeah. voice. <laughs> Sorry about that. That Let's stinks. Wait. Not as bad as it was in January. Thankfully. Yeah, because oh, you were, you were pretty bad. bad. <laughs> but, you know, those kids go back to school. Uh huh. Those adorable little walking petri dishes. <laughs> right. They don't feel a thing. Mm hmm. But, uh, and yet all the adults around them, even ones that aren't really around the kids too much, end up getting sick. They give it to mom and dad. Mm hmm. Mom and dad go to business meetings mm-hmm. with me. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> I'll take it. To be fair, I think it might have come from me because I help out with a couple of kids. Oh, that's true. You know, and so I'm sure that I spread it to you somehow. It could. It could be. But you, you're you doing okay, right? You're kind of... I'm feeling fine. Yeah. I, I felt kind of sick last week for a day, but I rested and I feel okay now. So right. I'm probably fine. I've got the Tylenol cold and flu <laughs> and the Dayquil and the uh, Zycam and the emergency mm-hmm. and the Afrin. I'm well taken care of. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you've got everything you need. Yeah. So apparently on Park Avenue between Broadway and A Street, mm-hmm. right around the Kelt and the Pie Hole, is where our fan base is congregated on a Friday and Saturday night. Oh, really? You remember when we met Trip Odometer? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. kidding, buddy, but that's how I remember your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside the Pie Hole mm-hmm. one night. Same night as the shooter. Right. That was a crazy night. Uh, Then last week, I was walking out of the Kelt with my buddies. Mm -hmm. One of them's named Ben. I had a guy stop me, and he said, hey, Mike. (laughs) Like, hey, uh, do I know you? And he's like, no, you don't know me. (laughs) But I watch your podcast, and I like it. So, hey, Ben. That's hilarious. I love that. What's up, buddy? Wow, you're famous. Well, I, I mean, I guess it's gonna, it's gonna probably gonna happen more and more. I mean, that's the hope, isn't it? And we sure appreciate you watching and listening and likey and subscribing. Yeah, maybe next time we need an ego boost, we need to just go bar hopping around there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, that's, sounds like that's where our demographic is. <laughs> and it's always been right about there. Right. But it's certainly with a little gentrification of the new snake bite mm-hmm. in eighteen and. 
It just uh, continues to be. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ben. Kevin texted almost immediately after our episode and said, dude, <laughs> pi, uh, area equals pi r squared. Yeah, I felt a little dumb for not remembering that in the moment either. <laughs> we were talking about hypotenuses and compasses and protractors. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, but... Pi r squared. <laughs> I forgot that rudimentary math formula. Thank you, Kevin. It's almost like we haven't used it in years and don't really need it that much, just saying. Yeah, in my defense, <laughs> I, I measure acreage all the time. Right, Like right. you satellite imagery and Google Maps mm -hmm. and figure out, oh, the, I know the listing says 40 uh, acres, but it's really 15 usable. And then there's right. canal and lava beds, you know. But I don't think I've ever me measured something completely circular. Well, I mean, it's not the 70s anymore. We don't really have a lot of, like, groove lounges. We Exactly. <laughs> the groove lounge in yeah. the middle and the house is sort of central around it. Yeah. This isn't the Apple complex in mm -hmm. Cupertino. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes, to determine the square inches of pizza in an 18-inch pizza, you take the radius, which is half the diameter, which would be nine, uh... Square that mm -hmm. first, and then multiply it by pi to get the... I hope I didn't mess that one up, Kevin. Anyway. <laughs> you're good. You're good. That's how we know. Two 12 inches or 226 mm -hmm. square inches of pizza. One 18 inches, 254 square inches. Yes. Yeah. You know, I will <laughs> say, I like the look of a circular room. I think it's a really interesting concept, and that would be such a bitch to furnish, especially because mm. anything you put against that wall is going to have a gap behind it. Think of all of the times that stuff's just going to fall off the back of your nightstand. You would have to have, you know, custom furniture. You'd have to, for sure, or something. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know when you're in the money if mm -hmm. you got a circular room. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. If it's time to sell your circular room house, give us a call. <laughs> we'll do the math right. I promise. <laughs> all right. We also talked about Wyoming's crazy life. So, a guy. Ran over a wolf in his snowmobile, took it to a bar, paraded it around, made national news. Uh, they want to make, they, lawmakers in Washington, are like, what a barbaric thing to do. They want to outlaw it. I don't disagree. Yeah. Uh, and, but Wyoming wants to expressly permit it. And then we made fun of like states with the roadkill laws. Mm -hmm. And you, being a practical, <laughs> resourceful person, said, you know, I think if, if you do run something over, you ought to be able to eat it. I mean, it makes sense to me. And I don't disagree with that. I guess it kind of depends. Like some stuff you got to be careful about because of rabies and stuff. But, you know, like but nine times out of ten. We associated terms like tarnation and redneckery <laughs> with Alabama because uh -huh. that's the first state that came to mind. <laughs> Come to find out, there's a whole Wikipedia article on roadkill cuisine. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is what they call it. Hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Roadkill cuisine. I mean, they really did try to make it sound accept acceptable, didn't they? Can you Google Maps <laughs> that? Roadkill <Right? laughs> cuisine near me? Oh, you know what? I kind of want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, come to find out, Alabama is not one of the states. It is not. With the roadkill cuisine law? Now that in mind, would you like to hear a list? Yes. Okay, so we've got Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Georgia, Illinois... Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Wow. Yeah. Those are states where if you hit an animal, you can throw it in the back and mm -hmm. grill it up. Yep, sure can. Uh, I, I was kind of shocked to, to see New Jersey on there. Because I didn't really peg them as someone who, like, as a state that would be okay with that. But considering that one of their big uh, their big dishes is something called a garbage plate, it does sort of add a whole new layer of <laughs> um, options, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still picturing you pegging New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, if it's the and whole state, off. that'll take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and to be clear, I wouldn't peg New Jersey. Not it's even, New Yorker better. Come not on. Not even Mike the Situation. <laughs> Absolutely That's not. That's Snooky. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I, I, I am loath to bring this up again, but just in case you thought we were lying last episode, here is an actual photo of the Take a Dump billboard. Yes. Courtesy of Good to Go, which mm -hmm. is like ain't never heard of before the last year. Yeah, And now right. they're cropping up all over the place. Everywhere. There's two on First Street heading east, mm -hmm. uh, one on Hit, 
and when I so they're I guess trying to give Maverick a run for their money. Right, right. And I like them. I've been in both. They're fine. Yeah, they're yeah. good. Yeah, I do really like. They have these little um puff pastry things in the morning. Uh, they've got a ham and cheese one that's honestly really yeah. really good with a little taco sauce on it. I've had one of those, <laughs> and like a lot of gas station breakfast food, it's mostly mm-hmm. pastry. Oh yeah, <laughs> like they it's sort of like they take the nacho cheese and spread it on with a right. A thick paintbrush mm-hmm. and throw a couple of perfunctory bits of ham in, in it. <laughs> right, right. But I it's agree. mostly carbs. You're right. And it's pretty good. And the one in Ammon <laughs> by Thunder Ridge High School has a rusty taco. That's true. Love That's true. That I do like the rusty taco location. Yeah. So the billboard is either disgusting or cute, depending on whether you find poop jokes funny or not. Yeah. I. It says, here it is, it says take a dump and they write in an RV. Yeah. In between the A and the word dump. And mm-hmm. So you get it. I just, I don't like discussing that, first of all. Everybody does it. I know. Right. But do we have, I mean, we'll, I'll make dick jokes before we make poop <laughs> jokes. I agree. Yep. That and um, there's a Burger King logo right under it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to think about that in the same, right? Yeah, right. I, I wouldn't necessarily want my location... Uh, I guess associated with that so much. I understand. I understand right. advertising that you offer it, right. but also like, wouldn't it be better to say something like, "We like we have everything you could need from soda pops to a place to maintain your RV." <laughs> right. You know. I just I think there's better way, and we love to discuss marketing on this show, and marketing <laughs> fails. Right. Right. We've thrown the uh, Idaho statesman under the bus. Mm-hmm. Their terrible logo and uh, a yeah. few other places, I think, too. In fact, we'll talk about Pocatello's new logo and slogan coming up on mm-hmm. this show. I'm just not a fan, but just wanted to show it to you. Okay, here's something we're going to talk about that we're not going to show you. After <laughs> after much thought, Carly, and I know. careful consideration. We, yeah, we, we went back and forth on this a little bit. A lot. Yeah. We even reached out to our cul-de-sac focus group. Yes. Which we <laughs> rarely do. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Right at the beginning, we we did a little, we relied on them heavily. Like, Mm -hmm. can we get away with this? Can we not? Is this? Because we know we don't talk like any radio show or newscasting team Mm -hmm. you've heard in Idaho Falls, Idaho before ever. And I think that's why there's a place for us. Mm -hmm. You've seen the meme, right? It's the definition of mixed feelings when you see it. Right. As an animal lover, especially. Yes. I once held a funeral in second grade for a dead robin on oh, the yeah. ground. Yep. I I'm did that for a butterfly. very <laughs> sensitive. Anyway. I don't blame you. I digress. Mm-hmm. You've seen the meme, probably. There's a dead raccoon and somebody tied a mylar <laughs> helium filled balloon. Mm-hmm. So it's in the air that says, get well soon. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> well, and we're going to talk about Yellowstone Bear World in a little bit. Um, somebody did that to a raccoon <laughs> just so, maybe you saw it this week, just south of the Thornton exit, the exit mm-hmm. you take heading north to Yellowstone Bear uh-huh. World. That happened in real life, and we have really good HD video of it, but we're not going to show it. Nope. Unless you flood us with comments, maybe we could DM it to you. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'm willing to do that. I think that's fine. But the thing, it's just too sad, and we don't want to yeah. be the... Uh, Money's all bloated. Yeah, it's, we don't yeah. want to be the jackasses that are s- sitting here laughing at a dead animal. Yeah. No matter how funny the joke was, and the I Hate Life in Rexburg group really, really, really wants to see it. <laughs> right. But I, I don't want to be the guy that shows it. I will say, <laughs> I am kind of mad at whoever did that, because how dare you make me giggle when right. I experience and something roadkill. so That's, tragic and unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. especially because I love raccoons. Especially I love how fat their little butts are. Even if it was a deer, maybe. Yeah. Because you Ooh, see deer all the with, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was younger and my kids were younger and we'd drive from Idaho Falls to Salt Lake, mm-hmm. it would it would be a joke like, oh, the deer's sleeping. Right. You know, and then, and then it just progressed to, oh, deer. Yeah. <laughs> And the kids who wanted to see it could look out the window and the kids who didn't could go like this. Right. You know? Yeah. Which I think is smart. Sad. And yes, because I'm dark, it's it's hilarious. Yeah. It's a little but, funny. I hate to admit that it's a little <laughs> funny. 
Uh, it's a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> this feeling inside. <laughs> okay. Okay. We did that, right? Yes. Speaking of tragic things that happen to animals, do you want to get straight to Chimp Crazy? Yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. Uh, Just because it's a good segue from here. What a wild show, though. It's by, it's a documentary. This one is on Max. Mm -hmm. It's by the creators of Tiger, Tiger King. King that we all watched mm -hmm. during the Rona. Yep. That and Frozen 2. That's all we did. I know. It was all we months. could do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that having crazy in the title was very appropriate because, frankly, I, I don't think that you can be fully sane and choose to own a chimp. I don't think so either. It's terrifying. And what I learned from the documentary is especially after a certain age. Right. When they hit their adolescence, and I don't know where that is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was usually about 13 years old. So well, it was like their adulthood, but like um, it'd be when they were about how, 13 years old. But is, is that in human years or chimp years? It, it was 13 human years, and that's when it became more problematic. I would think that they, because they have shorter life, lifespans, right. their adolescence would be earlier. Well, you know, maybe I'm misremembering. I could be. Let, we'll chalk it up to not knowing, but yeah. at that point, mm -hmm. they become terrifying. Yeah, right. Well, and not only that, but they're not bigger than us, but they are a lot stronger. Yeah. You know? You've heard the phrase chimpanzee strength. Right, right. And they've got it. Yeah. I, I don't really get exactly how the mechanics of that work. Uh, that sounds so stupid to say, um, but realistically, like even though they're a lot smaller, they they seem to be a lot more dense and a lot more powerful. I would think that a two hundred pound man could go hand to hand with a two hundred pound chimp, but it doesn't sound like that's the case at all. Or a two hundred pound man could go up against a one hundred pound chimp. Something like that, yeah. Well, you know, I would think. I'm just oh, saying, sure, I would easy. think that you'd be able to do that. Because they'd be evenly matched weight wise, but apparently no. But they've got that strength, and right. they've got those uh, fangs. fangs. Mm -hmm. Yikes! Mm -hmm. Well, and also I think that there's probably a little bit of um, withholding on a human side. You know, like you right, might not because... be as willing to just go full throttle. And I almost wonder that. I I have had a, a couple times in my life I've found strength mm -hmm. that surprised even me. Right. Same. Uh, and I thought, whoa, where did where did that come from? Yes. You've heard stories of like I, when of like I was moms growing up, lifting cars off of their babies and stuff. When I was growing up, right. it was a six year old kid who was around his dad working under a car. Mm -hmm. The car fell off the jack, and the six year old kid was able to. Oh wow! You, know, you hear stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But and and I don't know if the chimps just have that same thing, but their trigger is set lower. Yeah, something. Anyway, it's an easy watch. It's only four episodes, mm -hmm. and they. Okay, so I listened to the documentary filmmakers talk about the process, mm -hmm. and for like the first year and a half, they're just taping stuff. They don't know where it's going. Right. A and then other stories develop, and they see that okay, this is where the story is. This mm -hmm. is what we're going to follow. So it's mainly a story about Tonka. Uh huh. A pretty famous chimp who's been in a lot of Hollywood productions. Yeah, including Buddy. Okay. Which was a 90s film, I believe. And uh, I, I wonder, was he the chimp in Nope? I mean, you remember. Ooh. So the Jordan Peele uh -huh. film Nope starts with a rather unpleasant scene involving a family TV sitcom with a chimp. Interesting. And the chimp goes crazy on the set. Huh. Gordy, I think his name was. Interesting. I don't know because I haven't seen Nope. Okay. Yeah, although I should totally watch Maybe that. Maybe we should watch that. I would love that. <laughs> I don't I don't really have an unreasonable fear, but I think I'm going to add chimps to, you know, I don't like zombies and I don't like hillbillies. Mm -hmm. Right. Because those are two things you can't really reason with, mm -hmm. you know, or the hills have yeah. eyes type hillbillies. Right, right. Is yeah. what I'm talking about. Like yeah. generations of inbreeding and just <laughs> out of their heads. Right, right. I think I'm going to add chimps to that list. I would agree. Absolutely. But they talk yeah. about not only Tonka and there's, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but that's one story. Mm -hmm. But they also talk about Travis the chimp that mm -hmm. ripped off the lady's face. Yes. Famously. And uh -huh. then Buck the chimp who... Uh, did he, something similar. Yeah. So I thought it was really interesting how they basically did sort of um, these, uh, the way that they structured the episodes basically was that they would talk about infamous chimp attacks and then they'd also be following the story of Tonka sort of as an A-line. Yeah, they so like sort an A -line, of -line intertwined, yeah. Yeah. I was sort of wondering if Tonka was going to have a moment where he attacked someone. 
I was wondering too. You know, um, because of how they were setting it up. But I think really what they were trying to do was just illustrate how dangerous it is to choose to keep these animals, especially in the way that a lot of the folks were were keeping them, which I don't get. Especially because, like, they're not that cute. <laughs> they don't seem very cuddly. And they throw their own poop. They fling poo. Like, that seems like the worst pet. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you're really rich and you have... This needs to go to good to go. <laughs> right? If you're really rich and you have a, a maid that you just hate, you know, and you want to make her life hell... Then I can then I can understand having a chimp. What was Michael Jackson's chimp? Bubbles? Oh, I don't remember. Like bubbles? Yeah. Uh. Well, and was it a chimp or was it one of those little black and white monkeys? I don't know. I don't know. I think it was a chimp. Yeah. He didn't rip off MJ's face. Um, well, did that he really the, need to? That was the plastic surgeon's job. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the biggest I would go would we be one of those little... We are terrible people. <laughs> yeah. I, I, here's the thing. I would never own a monkey... But if I did, the biggest I would go would be one of those little black and white ones, like yeah. uh, what Ross had on Friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Those, That's about it. That thing had fangs, too, though, oh, from yeah. what I remember. Did it uh-huh. not? Oh, yeah. They absolutely do. Yeah. Yep. They have some pretty pronounced canines. Yeah. We, uh, a tamarind probably wouldn't be too bad, and they're really cute. They, they're the little Albert Einstein-looking ones that you can see at the zoo. What were the what were the monkeys that were uh, wanting to high five me through the oh, glass? Those ones were actually bonobos. Since we're on it, let's talk about the Idaho Falls Zoo and the masquerade ball we went to. Yes, let's. Last Friday night. Yeah, and that little monkey that wanted to be your buddy. He did. <laughs> he really did. Yeah. I kind of wonder if it was the mask or something. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, here's a, here's a couple photos of Carly and I. Mm-hmm. Boy, that mask you got me is so extra. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah. Maybe he liked all the little leaves on it. Or he some was like, sort of I want to climb that tree. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there we were. We had a great time. DJ Marv, what's up? He was good, dude. Marv is a legend. Yeah. Now, I know. I think I've done a Marv impression on this show before. Mm-hmm. He's the guy with the voice of God <laughs> that does the bio dyads. <laughs> right, right. Um. And he was there spinning it up. He mm-hmm. did a great job. He did. He did. And uh, um, also, he totally looks kind of like Tim Curry. You hear that, Marv? That's a compliment coming yeah. from Carly. Well, especially because Tim Curry, I mean, he was a smoke show. Yeah. You know, just yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were the tickets? 30 bucks. Uh, so they were 30 if you bought them before, 35 if you bought them day of. Okay. So we got them for the discounted price because we planned ahead. Look at us go. The beer and wine was all free. Yeah. So there was no beer. It was uh, champagne and wine. Oh, okay. Or n- not champagne, sparkling wine? They had champagne. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I heard a couple. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Champagne and wine was free. Everything else was uh, like food and stuff you had to pay for. Now, here's what's funny. I've actually been to this event before. Okay. And back when I went, the tickets were about 50 bucks and food was included. Okay. So yeah. they, f- they found the right price point. Right. What's included combination. Yeah. Because I would say there was a good amount of people there. Mm-hmm. At least a hundred. Right, right. Maybe more. I'm not good at counting people, especially mm-hmm. in a place as as big as the zoo mm-hmm. and with so many corners you could go to. Right, yeah. Here's the penguins. We had a good time, though, looking around at all the little critters. You see one penguin is standing on the bank. Mm-hmm. He jumps in to join his buddy. That was cute. I thought that was so cute. Here's the camels. Mm-hmm. You can tell it's a Bactrian because like a capital B, it's got two humps. If you turn the capital B on its side, that's how I remember. Mm-hmm. The other one is dromedary, uh-huh. which if you turn on its side, capital D, one it's hump. Got one hump. Uh-huh. That's how you remember that. Yep. <laughs> uh, but it was really great to walk around the zoo in the shade because there's uh-huh. lots of mature landscaping there. Yes. Yeah. So it was 5.30 to 8.30, and by the time we were there, it's 7. Right, and it was basically dusk when when we were going around, which I actually think was kind of ideal because I noticed that a lot more animals were out at that time than usual. We saw both white tigers. We did. Uh, You mean snow leopards? Snow leopards, I mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, those. Which also, I haven't seen those guys in years. Yeah. You know, every time I go to the zoo, I oh yeah, built in snowshoes. (laughs) Yeah. But every time I go to the zoo, I look for them and they're never out. You got to see mommy and daddy Fennec Fox. And baby too. Yeah. Oh, the baby was so cute, so little. And they were just running around playing. And the serval was out and about too. Yes. Which I thought was really cool. What else? Uh, Let's see here. The sloth bears. The sloth bears were out. They were pretty cute. Um, lots of the birds were out and about. The macaws, mm-hmm. that owl. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, the falcon too. Yes. That was pretty cool. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, had a, a great time. time. Evenings are a great time to go. It really is. It was super cool. To the zoo. Mm-hmm. You remember we mentioned the Pets of Downtown mural a couple episodes ago? Uh-huh. In fact, it's right by the pie hole. Yes, yeah. And page insurance, mm-hmm. I want to say. Anyway, and I don't know if everybody knows about it because it's a blink and you'll miss it thing if you're driving. Right. If you're walking, you'll see it, at least if you're walking south mm-hmm. on Park, headed toward Broadway from A. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we just thought, how cool is that? Well, a buddy of mine has, had requested a little portrait slot mm-hmm. and paid for it. And they put it up. I love that. I think, and it takes a while. I uh-huh. think, depending on how many they get in, because uh-huh. it's not cheap. It's two hundred and fifty bucks. That's not that bad to memorialize now, your pet. Do they charge per pet or per spot? Uh, I think per spot, but that makes sense. I wonder what their rules are. Yeah. There's a link in this post we've given you, and the cool thing about that two hundred fifty bucks is seventy five of that goes to the mm-hmm. Snake River Animal Shelter. Oh. That's awesome. What, I love what? that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is your buddy's cat, Shotgun? Yes. Yes. I love I love Shotgun. I've only seen pictures, but so, she's so cute. And here's another one. <laughs> yes. There's Shotgun <laughs> memorialized, and it's just so cool that to see. That is so cool. A very good likeness Yeah. of Shotgun. Shotgun is sort of a feral kitty. Mm-hmm. She has lasted 18 years, and she may not be around much longer, A, statistically, and B... What it always is, renal failure. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with that with two of my kitties. Right. Rest in peace, Zhao and Sai. Mm -hmm. I miss you. They were good kitties. Daddy misses you. Anyway, Mm -hmm. they they were the best kitties. They were very cute. Yeah. So he has memorialized shotgun. If you want to be a part of the Pets of Downtown mural, Mm -hmm. it's really a cool thing. Lincoln Post. And you are IFAF this week, by the way. Chris mm-hmm. Pie 5, 21 Finger Gun Salute, and Chef's Kiss. To you. And your artist. Okay, are you ready for treat time? I'm so ready because I've been looking at the, at the bag this whole time and I'm so excited. Let's hold it up so the kids can see it too. Yes. From Taffy Town comes Bear Lake Raspberry. I'm excited because now you were telling me that Bear Lake Raspberry is sort of like Idaho Huckleberry. Yeah. And you sort of surprised me that um, you've never been to Bear Lake. Nope. So Bear Lake is a nice, uh, it's just past Lava Hot Springs. Right. Sorry, Lava Hot Springs. I'll say it your way just for this show. Never again. (laughs) Um, I say just past, probably another hour past. Right. But yes, most of Idaho gift shops will have Huckleberry stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you go to Bear Lake, which is on the border, half of it's in Idaho, half of it's in Utah-ish. Mm-hmm. Right. When you go to Bear Lake, you have to get a raspberry shake. And I thought, what a weird local thing. This is from a place in West Jordan, Utah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is probably stuff you're not going to see anywhere outside of Idaho or Utah. Right, right. Now, where did you find this bag? This was at Brolam's. Really? Yeah. How nice. I know that you like strawberry. I like raspberry, too. And not so much cherry. I like cherry well enough, but it's not my favorite. But you're okay with raspberry? I, I love raspberry. I think that's my favorite of all the red flavors. Ooh, that's a good point. I mean, I like watermelon a lot, too. Okay. Sorry, I just went for it. And cinnamon. <laughs> Mm. Okay, it's soft. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that. That's nice. Well, and I like how tangy it is. Mm-hmm. Like it sort of it did the thing where I got my. It's doing the thing to me right now. Hands going really quick. Yeah. Where where they hurt just a little. Your jaw right by your ear kind of goes. Mm-hmm. Is that a pucker? Yeah. I'm yeah. puckering. Well, and I like that you can taste the salt in it. And it just really balances, it balances out the flavor really nice. The and that, that tastes like real raspberry too. Saltwater taffy. Yeah. And not only does it taste a little raspberry-y, mm-hmm. it also tastes a little shaky. Mm, There's a little mm-hmm. vanilla-y, creamy, something going on there too. And that's a good point. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really nice. Mm. Uh, yeah. I might be stealing a couple of those. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Carly has candy jars in them mm-hmm. in her house that... Sometimes have stuff that's like a year old. <laughs> like grandma. I'm working on going through it a little bit more. You're taking that cottage core, grandma core, <laughs> McDonald's, grandma McFlurry aesthetic mm-hmm. way too far. <laughs> I like to have candy around. I like to know that I have the option.
Is it time to sell your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate, and I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. You know we have insight on the Idaho Falls community, and we know the current real estate market too. And we're backed and brokered by the best, Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. When it's time to sell your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Lincoln Post. Go thrifting for your new fall looks at Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Yeah, right now, save on fabulous fall fashions, including sweaters, hoodies, cardigans, layering tops, denim, boots, and sneakers. Elsie's Closet. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Looking for help with your upcoming wedding or event? You don't have to do it all on your own. DIY Weddings and Event Rentals has great ideas for you, like the Polaroid guest book, candy salad jars, even a full-service drink trailer, and everything you need like backdrops, signs, dinnerware, and decorations. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208-403-2040. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first rental at DIY Weddings and Event Rentals. Do you want locally raised beef for the holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. And it's crockpot season. Make your favorite pot roast with a four-pound chuck roast that's included. For your own farm-to-table experience, find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. And if you're a Spud Kings fan, be listening for a special promotion coming soon. For their 10th anniversary, Roof Rescue just gave away four free roofs to exceptional members of our community. The winners are Andrew and Elizabeth, teachers involved in youth athletics. John and Ariel work to help feed the hungry. JJ is a volunteer firefighter. He and his wife Margot help with foster care. And Chris is in law enforcement. And the Army Reserve, his wife Sarah, is a teacher. Congrats again from Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Did you have family or friends visit Idaho Falls this summer? Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton t-shirts. Including these cool vintage versions of the Water Tower, the West Bank, and now the Civic Auditorium. Check out tetontshirts.com. Type that right into the URL field or click the link on this post. Teton t-shirts.com exclusive designs that aren't available in gift shops. If you really want a Darth Tater t-shirt, no judgment, but you can get that on the internet. Teton t-shirts.com, wear a real piece of Idaho Falls. Congratulations to the city of Pocatello for finally getting a new logo and slogan. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, I know they identified the need for a new logo like in 2019. Really? Okay. But I guess they're using the COVID excuse. Right, right. Even though it's like five years mm-hmm. uh, as to why they haven't like adopted it yet. Right. And, they, and they're still not going to adopt it. They voted a resolution and the, the gavel came down and it was passed or whatever. Okay. They're not going to start it till January 1st of 2025. Well, that makes sense because, you know, nice fresh start to the new year. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like their logo. Here it is. You'll see that it's a star over a lone single mountain peak. Mm -hmm. And part of the star could be interpreted as the snow-capped mountain peak. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. It's clean. It's crisp. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. I love it. No notes. Their slogan is the one and only. Eh. And to that, I sort of feel like, meh. I mean, that only... You could say that about anything. Right. It is the only city called Pocatello, right? Like, there's not, like, another one somewhere in the country, like Springfield, how there are, like, 70 of them? Yeah, right. I think you're right. I think it is the only Pocatello. Right. Like, there's a Paris, Texas. Yes. uh And there's... But I I don't think... Hell, I think there's even a Paris, Idaho. I think there is. Yeah. Yeah, actually. (laughs) Yeah. But you're right. There are nearly 70 Springfields, and that's why... Mm -hmm. The joke in The Simpsons is the town is called Springfield because it could be in any state. Right. But I think there is one and only Pocatello. So you got us there, guys. Right, right. I can see that. I just don't think it says much about the town. You know, this could be the one and only glass of water in this room. Right, exactly. But I guess that's sort of the thing is like if you're only Merritt is being the only (laughs) one. (laughs) Well, there's got to be something else good about Pocatello. I know it's hard because I went to school there. I know it's... 
there's not a lot going on, but there's got to be something else they could flaunt. Right. Pocatello. It's kind of true. We got a college here. You know, I bet whoever- Idaho Falls doesn't have that. <laughs> I mean, they've got the uh, CEI. Right. And they've got the uh, satellite U-F-I. campus. So. Right. Well, and the satellite ISU ca- campus too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but- Right. We, we have no college, really, four-year college to call yeah. our own. No, that's true. Got BYU Idaho up north, mm-hmm. ISU south. Yeah. Not, in fact, I believe Idaho Falls is the biggest town in the U.S. without a four-year college. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of crazy. We'll hmm. fact check next episode, but we should get a college. Yeah, I just I I do agree. I think that they there could be more there, but it's not it's right. not bad. It's not right. bad. Uh, B plus. I mean, I'm sure someone worked really hard on that yes. slogan. <laughs> a plus for effort. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Back to school means a few things. Mm-hmm. Um, slow down in those school zones. And here's something I didn't think we'd have to talk about on this show. Don't send your kids to school in a Lyft or an Uber. Oh, really? Can you imagine? Is someone, I mean, I, I kind of can see how that would happen. You know, if you're running late to work and this is your last chance before you're fired and you also need to get your kid to school and you're a single parent. Chris, the Uber Lyft driver, says this as nicely as possible. It's a violation of Uber and Lyft terms of service for minors to ride unaccompanied in an Uber or Lyft. Really? Yeah. Huh. So he drives for both. Uh Uh-huh. And you know how when you see a warning sign or a sign posting the rules? Right. That the reason they posted that sign is somebody has violated one of those rules right. at least once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine somebody tried to send their kid to school in an Uber or a Lyft. And also, I wouldn't trust an Uber or, or a Lyft no. to take my child no. to school. Some stranger. I mean, you know? how many times as kids were we told, don't talk to strangers, don't, don't get, get into in a their stranger's car. car. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're ordering strangers from the internet. <laughs> right. To take our kid off to... Hopefully school. Right, right. Anyway, he said he's not going to do it. He said, I would carry my child on my back to school before I sent them unaccompanied in an Uber or Lyft. If you need a car, schedule a round trip and take the ride with your child. If you ask Mm -hmm. nicely, maybe I'll shut the app off and give you a ride back for free if money is an issue. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but we've got gift too. Yes, right. So I have to And I don't know where they go. I mean, they within city limits, yeah. you know, so I have to assume that would at least be a better option, <laughs> you know, and that's at least regulated by the city. So that's not as bad as sending it with some rando, right. you know? Right. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, that's, that's sad that that came up. Yeah. And worth mentioning, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Another back to school thing <laughs> is Hoko, homecoming. Oh, Yes. Always fun. A friend, very creative friend, Shannon, posted this. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing it. I'm trying to help my senior come up with creative ways to ask a girl to homecoming. And for some reason, he just fired me. (laughs) Here were her three ideas. Number one, he knows how to juggle. So I told him to put on a clown costume, show up to her door juggling and say, don't leave me at home juggling my balls. (laughs) (laughs) Come to homecoming with me. Her parents would hate that. So that was that was uh, mom's first idea. <laughs> Second idea was take her to a cemetery and chase her around with an axe while yelling, don't be scared. I'm just dying to axe you to homecoming. Okay. All right, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's that's seasonally a felony appropriate. In the ma- that's a felony in the making, though. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, but whatever. Oh, come on. It's not a felony to carry around an axe in a cemetery. <laughs> it is to chase is someone it? around with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the part I'd have a problem with. <laughs> Extra motivation to go, I guess. <laughs> mm, I mean, isn't that kind of a threat at that point? Right. Yeah. 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 I don't know if she can be held to it if it's, you know, agreed to under duress. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Contracts entered into. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> under extreme duress. Number three, show up with a football, a soccer ball, a golf ball and say, this is taking a lot of balls to ask you. So will you please go to homecoming with me? <laughs> okay. That one I think is funny. I think those are all just capital ideas. <laughs> I mean, just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the first two I get. Uh-huh. The last one, fun, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That I I can't see anyone really having a problem with that unless they're just a stickler and a prude. Right. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. No, I think that one's fun. Thanks for sharing, Shannon. <laughs> Well done. Top-notch work. Those are cute. We want to tell you about the story of Rainbow. Now, Carly's pretty extra, 
But do you have a cat named Rain, R-A-Y-N-E, Bo, B-E-A-U? No, I don't. Well, that's um, super cute, though. Benny and Suzanne Anguiano <laughs> had a cat named Rainbow. Uh huh. Well, they went to Yellowstone National Park in June. Oh, uh huh. They've taken their cats with them before, apparently. Oh, I love that. But this time, Rainbow got startled. Uh huh. And took off into the <gasps> woods. Oh no! Their vacation ended, and they were faced with the really, really sad choice of having to go back home without poor Rainbow. <gasps> So that was in June. Uh huh. And the story just came out this month, but apparently two months afterwards, so a month ago, uh huh. Rainbow was located. Uh, so they live in Salinas, California. Is okay. that, do I have that right? Yeah. The cat, Rainbow, was found in Roseville, California. Oh, wow. 800 miles from Yellowstone. And only 200 miles left to go to Salinas. Oh, wow. Although I am kind of shocked that he was able to get that far without being caught sooner. <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> made it 800 miles. That's 800 miles. And he would walk 500 more. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be the cat who... 800 miles is like here to Seattle, here to Portland. Yeah, that's a... That's a 12-hour drive. Right. He did it in two months. Wow. And they, they found him and they oh know gosh. it's Rainbow because uh -huh. he was microchipped. Right. And I guess he was passed out in a park in Roseville, California. Is he okay? A lady saw him. Uh -huh. He was not okay. <gasps> he lost like 30% of his body weight. Oh, no. Went for, or maybe 40, 13 to 8 pounds. Oh, no. He was like deficient in um, uh, protein and a few other things. Uh-huh. But they, you know, checked his microchip. Called the owners. They came and got him. Oh. The family's reunited now. Here's a before. Don't get too sad. First of all, let's show you the before and after photo that the family posted. There's mm -hmm. Rainbow all fat and happy with a buddy cat, looks oh. like. Rainbow after his 800-mile journey. Oh. Now here's a photo of Rainbow in all their glory. Look at that. That's a good-looking okay, cat. Okay, okay. Cute little kind of cross-eyed Siamese-looking guy. Oh, I love that. Almost looks <laughs> like a cute. seal point and a blue point mixed. Uh-huh. Yeah, fat okay, and happy there. Okay, that's cute. Good. But I'm just so amazed mm -hmm. at how, after talking about raccoon roadkill... Right. ...and talking about, oh, a story just last week. Thank you, Kevin, for gifting me this New York Times article, since I'm too lazy to subscribe. 60-year-old <laughs> woman wandered off the trail in Yellowstone, suffered burns to her lower leg... After she fell through a thin crust of ground. Yes, I heard about this. Scalding water. Think of all the shit in Yellowstone. Right. That could have just taken poor Rainbow out. Buffalo. Yes. I don't know. Do they have cougars? I think so, yeah. Oh yeah. Rain yeah, and bears. Would oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Rain would have been a tasty little snack. Right, right. And uh, are you catching my cold? Uh, no, I just have a, okay. I have a tickle on my nose. Okay. Oh, that's the it's worst. It's driving me nuts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. You've been petting Rango. <laughs> He's no, got I think those, so, yeah. <laughs> those hairs that'll stick inside your nose. Yep. Anyway, all of the hazards, including hot pots and everything right. that apparently humans can't avoid, mm -hmm. rain made well, it out I think of those. A lot of cats are a little smarter than humans, honestly. <laughs> well, but, and think about this too. How? How did right. that cat know? Picture them driving from. Salinas, California, to mm -hmm. Yellowstone, a thousand miles. Right. Rainbow wasn't paying attention. No, he Rainbow was, was on the dash, dead asleep. <laughs> yeah. But that cat somehow knew which direction in general he was heading. Mm -hmm. I know that animals have all kinds of crazy mechanisms in their body. Homing instincts. Yeah, that sort of help them know directions to go. You know, like there are theories that um, I think it's a certain type of bird. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I read the article. But like there are some theories that some birds have like um, some sense of electromagnetic fields. And that's how they can figure out which way is north and which way is south. So stuff we as humans can't even perceive. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I have to I have to believe that. After yeah. This. Right. And I have to assume that probably like temperature sense, you know, maybe even like um, the elevation he could detect in some way, and he was right. like, this is wrong. I need to find the other one. Yeah. You know? But just the fact that he was going in the right direction. Yeah. And. That's incredible. And way to go, pet owners. Mm -hmm. uh, Benny and Suzanne for microchipping your pet. Yes. It's so important. How cool is that? I'm just so impressed. I'm so happy he got back to his family. Poor little pioneer. He was yeah. lost on the Oregon Trail for so long. <laughs> Didn't die of dysentery or anything. No, I know. <laughs> oh, good boy. Did he do it?
Are you following this P. Diddy mess? <sighs> Honestly, man, I can't follow the news anymore. It's all so weird and depressing and stuff. But We, we mentioned it a few months ago, and he was arrested this week. Mm -hmm. You can look up all the charges. I'm too lazy to list them here. There's a lot. But I will say <laughs> the funniest part of last week was when Kesha re-released new lyrics to her song TikTok. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning like P. Diddy. <laughs> See, that's how we do it. I like that, dude. Yeah. Way to go, Kesha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, uh, that was funny. Yeah. I love her. She's great. And then <laughs> Tupperware going bankrupt. Yeah. I know a lot of people going to be mm -hmm. upset about this. Will, will they? <laughs> I mean, it, there's a reason it's been on the de decline for a while. Like, it doesn't go bankrupt because people are still buying it and love it. Right. You know? I mean, they've been around, what, 70 years now or something like mm, that? Yeah, about 70 years. And they had, I was always fascinated by two things. One, their product innovation. Right. A and what I mean by that is when I was a kid and they came out with uh, Tupperware popsicle makers. Oh, yeah, those were cool. You'd pour juice into the mold, stick the little ring pop with the mm -hmm. stick in it. Mm -hmm. And then three hours later, ooh, yay, popsicles. Right, right. That was cool. Yeah. Super cool. And even just recently, I was very excited. Oh, probably five, six years ago, I knew a Tupper Tupperware lady. Mm -hmm. And they had this, uh, I was on a diet at that point, low carb, high protein. Mm -hmm. They have this little, um, and I wish I still had it. I don't think I do anymore, but I'm sure there's a way to do it like in a glass cup. Uh -huh. But you could put a couple of um, eggs uh -huh. in a little container, stick it in the microwave, and boom, you'd have like an egg patty. Oh, cool. Like, say, in an Egg McMuffin. Uh-huh. Or as I call them, Egg McMuffuggin. <laughs> right, right. Because they're so muffuggin' good. They are so good. <laughs> There's your free advertising. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'd have a nice little egg patty mm -hmm. for breakfast. Right. I thought that was a pretty cool innovation. Yeah, that's smart. But I mean, honestly, yeah, you could do that with basically anything the shape that you want it to be. Well, and I, you know, I give you a hard time because you are, because of your grandma core aesthetic, <laughs> you are all glass. Yes. I, yeah, I prefer glass um, containers if I can find them. The other thing I was fascinated about Tupperware is, did you know they had a policy? Like people um, would have a, you know, we've talked about the popcorn slash puke bowl <laughs> right repeatedly on the show now <laughs> uh -huh. yeah that's sort of a point of fascination <laughs> for us isn't it <laughs> foot bath slash uh -huh. yeah yeah lord knows what else potato salad bowl <laughs> potato salad bowl um and if one went bad or if a lid melted in the dishwasher uh -huh. you could send it back to tupperware and they'd replace it oh. with the item that was most like it okay that's nice i know thrifters mm -hmm. or i don't know if i know any I know I saw it on TikTok, but you know of thrifters at would least. go to Goodwill, DI, mm -hmm. St. Vincent de Paul, mm -hmm. Idaho Youth Ranch, wherever. Right. Get some Tupperware, send it into Tupperware. Smart. Uh huh. Uh huh. And get, and a, get set a brand back. new set. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. Hmm. And I know that Tupperware tried to do like the because it was always Tupperware parties. That was their sales method. Yes. Yeah. They always did the MLM. Yeah. Model. You had you had to know a Tupperware lady mm -hmm. or man. Yeah. Um, but. Which is one thing I don't like about them. I don't support MLMs if I can help it. Yeah. You know, especially in this area. I know there are lots of, you know, stay at home moms who try to do that and stuff. But realistically, like the entire practice is just super predatory. And so I don't want to feed into the machine and well, like, yeah. keep getting people in these situations. Not only that, but realistically, the prices are just, they're too, they're too damn expensive. Were they? For what you're getting. Okay. I didn't you know? know. I, you know, I well, never. I mean, well, especially compared to like, okay, you can go to the Dollar Tree and you can get a set of three or four, um, you know, plastic food storage containers, probably Rubbermaid brand or something like that, or, you know, some, or Glad, that's the big one. You can get those for $1.25. So why wouldn't I do that versus going out and buying some crazy expensive Tupperware? One more weekend left in September. Mm -hmm. And time to start putting up your Halloween decorations, folks. Uh, it's already so started. Excited. Carly's house. We mentioned last episode that the Haunted River in Manan uh -huh. opened just this past Friday. Wild Adventure Corn Maze is also open. Nice. And coming up Saturday, this Saturday, mm -hmm. September 28th, the Downtown Oktoberfest. Oh, fun. In downtown Idaho Falls, it's at the Broadway Plaza, which again is between, it's what will soon be a skating rink. Right. In mm -hmm. between Smoke and Fins and Ribbon Chop House. Yes. Right yeah. on Memorial and Broadway. Oh, I'm excited. 
excited. That'll be fun. Yeah, uh, drinking. Ooh, I hope they have big soft pretzels. Of course, dancing. Mm-hmm. I bet you they gotta. You gotta have big soft pretzels. Yeah, at an Oktoberfest. Yeah, traditional Bavarian gear. Ooh. Do we, and are they saying that people are going to be there in Lederhosen? I mean, That's either they're hot. encouraging it or they're <laughs> saying it is. I, I actually didn't quite understand that about that. That's hot. I dig it. Yeah. But all right. Oh, two bald guys will be playing from three to five. Then <laughs> so cold hard whiskey. I know the uh, drummer in two bald guys. I love that. I love that they lean into it too. In fact, I think he's got a couple of, uh, yeah, Damon has, he's got a couple of Savannah's. Is he bald? Yeah. Hilarious. He's one of the two bald guys. I'm just checking. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say the funnier. here. Oh, really? <laughs> At the yes, zoo, that's reminded right. me of him, yeah. Oh, I love Savannah cats. They're so cool, dude. So cool. Yeah. But anyway, to be fair, I can't decide if it'd be funnier if the band was called Two Bald Guys and they had like really glossy long hair <laughs> or if it's funnier if it is literally Two Bald Guys. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is literally Two Bald Guys. Yeah. And I love your gorillas style artwork oh that's cool for the band yeah it's pretty cool i love that and you still have four more weeks to enjoy yellowstone bear world before they close for the season that's right we decided to go to bear world as part of mike's birthday it was super fun that was right yeah yeah thank you for making it by the way a birthday week Mm -hmm. and the pound cake was amazing you're welcome oh my goodness myself i ate like half of that thing by myself it was so good (laughs) went to yellowstone bear world great Mm -hmm. time of year to do it four weeks left Mm -hmm. well and it wasn't too hot it wasn't too cold we went on a sunday so it wasn't very crowded no yeah so here's one thing i really like about yellowstone bear world you just pay it right at the front gate and then you can go to all of the parts of the park right like the rides are free Uh uh-huh the uh, uh, the Ju- Jurassic Creek. Jurassic Creek. Yeah. <laughs> Only a little less cool than Jurassic Park. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. no, no, but there are other optional things you can do if you've got mm-hmm. the money and want to spend it. You know, bottle feeding the bear cubs. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the bear feeding excursion thing where you're up sure. six feet and throwing bread to the bears. Right, you, right. You can do that too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot included in the admission. Right. Yeah. You're not paying for like individual tickets to go on each of the rides. Yeah. There's you a know? petting zoo there. The petting zoo was so fun. Okay. Here's Carly petting a goat and then Carly petting a baby goat <laughs> and Carly petting a deer and Carly petting a baby deer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I was pretty excited to get <laughs> my mitts on some crits. All the things. Here's Jurassic <laughs> Creek. Look at that. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. I love the bright pink trees they have there. I the cherry blossoms cool or too. whatever that is. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was cool. Oh, and let's bring up a map, too, because it looks like mm-hmm. behind Jurassic Creek, kind of, yeah, is where they're, they're, they've got an area that they're expanding. Yes. Yeah. You kind of drive, I think, through it as you exit. You do. The bear tour part. Mm -hmm. And is this a water feature? Is this like a Bellagio style? That's what it looks like to me. Gateway Plaza in Salt Lake City style fountain show that we're going to be getting? I have a feeling that's exactly what it is, especially considering it's called Jurassic Creek. Yeah. And so far, there's only a little tiny creek that goes through it. I'm sort of assuming that they're going to add a little bit more water to that feature. Mm -hmm. You know? That looks pretty cool, guys. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. And it looks like they've got a brand new carousel going in pretty soon, too. Yes. Uh, So we were able to see that from our vantage point. On the Ferris wheel. There we are at the top and looking around to the Ferris wheel. And Mm -hmm. the roller coaster that I was not ready for, (laughs) because just a warning to you people that think you can handle (laughs) roller coasters, Mm -hmm. but can't handle a -a tilt-a-whirl, me... Right. Ever since my unfortunate incident in a dog fight at an air show in Idaho Falls, Idaho in 1998. Yeah. I hit too many G-forces, Carly. I get it. I've been like upside down in a stunt helicopter. (laughs) I've been in a glider airplane. Yeah, you've done a lot. I've done some stuff. (laughs) Yeah, and yet this little tiny... But Poland roller coaster is what took you out. Three time. G's or whatever it was. Yes, I got off the roller coaster like... <laughs> yeah, a little ready to burn. <laughs> Yeah. I was okay. Yeah, it was fine. We still had a great time after that, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> but I was a little worried about you for a sec. Just be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> had it had it been a hot day, I probably would have been screwed. Yep. But it was a nice cool day. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. You exit through the gift shop. Look, they have a, their own little build a bear, only it's build an animal. Yeah, which I thought was smart. And so realistically, they... of all of the places to have a build a bear at least type thing, 
you got to have one at Bear World. Right. And, you know? and hey, in your pocket knife selection, be sure to restock Mike. Yeah, there were no Mikes. And nor were there any Carly with a Ks. There never are. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Even if they have a Carly with a K, they never have a Carly with a an E-Y at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. it's always an I or an IE or something stupid like that. Mm-hmm. Or just a plain Y. <laughs> like a heathen. So, so that's our one little <laughs> note, Yellowstone Bear yeah. World. But it was it was great. Yeah, it was fun. It yeah. was a good time. Yeah. All right, we're winding down the show. Our penultimate topic. Mm-hmm. You know, I just recently found, I, I don't know what documentary I was watching that made me look that up. Mm-hmm. You know what penultimate means? Yeah, it's like the second to last. Yeah. Yeah. Why not just say second to the last? Penultimate sounds penultimate way cooler. Penultimate, second to last. Same number of syllables. Yeah, and yet penultimate sounds way cooler. So, so penultimately, <laughs> we finally did go, both mm-hmm. of us for the first time. To Shelly Spud Days. Yes, which is why we're wearing our Marilyn Monroe potato sack t-shirts. See that? Available at tetontshirts.com. Thank you for doing the plug. I was going to do that for you. Oh. <laughs> we're good. Thank you for being ready to do that for me, had I not. And <laughs> You're welcome. I'm sorry to have taken that away from you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what this is basically is a uh, recreation of the potato mm-hmm. sack, the text and design on the potato sack dress worn famously by one Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what'd you think? I thought it was fun. Yeah, it was super fun. It was, it's very Amandays esque. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. Um, I did like that it was very po- potato themed. That's great for me because I love potatoes. They even <laughs> had an area where you would grab an Idaho potato sack. Yes. And then go and pick out what, how you, however you wanted to fill that bag up. Five, yeah. ten, it looked like a 10 pound bag to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was brilliant, honestly. And they were um, good-looking russets. Right, right. Yeah, Shelly knows how to do that. It was definitely bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. You know, especially because Shelly is kind of a smaller town. I didn't think there'd be quite so many vendors and stuff like that, but it was actually pretty fleshed out. We wanted to go see the Spud Tug. Yes, yeah. Right there at uh, Shelly City Park. Mm-hmm. And we said that five times fast. And uh, we got some video. Let's just explain it really quick if you're only listening and not watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So there's this big rope. Right. Big, thick rope, Uh right? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So thick that the person on the back end, I noticed one of their strategies was to wrap it around themselves twice. Smart. And sort of get a lower center of gravity. Mm -hmm. And they had the big people... In the back. Right. And the and the small light people up front. Yeah, kind of like um, an anchor in the yeah. back. Probably a 10-foot long, 8-foot long mm-hmm. pit full of mashed potatoes. Yep. Now, I was hungry for blood. <laughs> I wanted to see something like uh, somebody do just do a face plant right. into the mashed potatoes. And maybe that's happened in years past. Uh-huh. I mean, I wanted to see like a, what was the Mel Gibson movie about the Mayans? An apocalyptica style, <laughs> you know, fight to the death. Uh-huh. That didn't happen. Yeah, no. But the the first person in line on the losing team <laughs> did end up getting, look at this, a little uh, a little uh, mashed potato <laughs> yeah. and perhaps some gravy they had on to their walk, pants. <laughs> they had to walk the spud walk of shame. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the mashed potato walk of shame. The yeah. spud tug. Walk of shame. Yeah, just like <laughs> covered in taters. Yeah. So it was, it was, uh, it did satisfy some of my bloodlust, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. As much as, <laughs> as much as a harvest based festival, festival can. Yeah. <laughs> now you got me thinking about midsummer. I know, right? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Chili City Park was full of people, full of food trucks. Mm-hmm. I finally got my Black Hawk. Yes. Uh, is that That's what it's called, yeah, right? Yeah, the Warhawk. I think you got the, the Warhawk, Warhawk Junior. From Black Hawk Barbecue. Uh-huh. Yes, I got a Junior because I was watching my figure. Yes, yeah. I got some hog on a log. They were all out of the macaroni and cheese, which yes. I was really bummed about. But they did give me a side of nacho cheese, so I did still satisfy my meat and cheese uh, craving. That's what you wanted. It's exactly what I wanted, so it was great. Yeah. A great time. Glad we went. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to go next year. Same. And now, so that was the penultimate bit. Uh-huh. Now, ultimately, a lot of times we'll come up with ideas on this show and just not act on them. Yeah. Tons. This time, we've acted on them. Remember in a prior episode, I talked about going to Love at First Bite and getting mm-hmm. one of their spud guns? You sure did. So, I looked them up on Amazon, mm-hmm. and they're four ninety nine, And uh, the reviews were like, this is a shit product. <laughs> oh, Don't even bummer. buy it. But I thought, if I'm going to spend the four ninety nine. Let me get it from Love at First Bite. Yeah, why not? So let me grab these. Okay, here we go. 
And I love the retro packaging on these. Right. Doesn't this, this look like cool. something right out of the 50s? Right. Now, I had one of these when I was a little kid. Oh, you did? Or at least my brother did. One of us did. Mm -hmm. I know I played with one, uh, but I'm pretty sure it came from the gas station down the street and it was crap quality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... If this is crap quality, we're not even going to blame Love at First Bite. No. By the way, what a great store. Right? They you have so much fun stuff. You haven't been in in a minute. It's been so long since. I think it's been at least a whole year. They've got all sorts of Idaho novelty items like this. Mm -hmm. Let's see the instructions. Oh, and by the way, we also have little, <laughs> I would almost say pathetic looking russet potatoes. These I are mean, not from these, Spud Days. These are pretty good size compared to my head. If you're head. on a diet... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they're a pretty good size for a potato. Right. They could be better, sure, but they're not bad. How to use. <laughs> okay, so first you plunge the gun into the potato uh -huh. without yeah. pulling the trigger, I believe. Yeah, you just it's pop it It's pulling on the trigger that's going to pop, pop that mm -hmm. potato pellet out. Yep. And then that's it. And yeah. then you dip it in a glass of water to clean it. Yep. Okay. You ready? Would you like to shoot each other? I would. With our spud guns? I would. Okay. I actually already have mine locked and loaded. I'm ready. Now, I'll try not to hit you in a face. Oh, you've already done it? Yeah. There's even show a me the hole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Show me the hole. <laughs> that could be taken out of context. So you kind of have to give it a little twist and a little, like, scoop. Okay. Yoink. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can see I'm I'm loaded now. Yep. You ready? I've got one in the chamber. You can shoot me in the face because I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for your chest. Okay. Okay. Ready? I'm not even gonna aim. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> really? I had a misfire. You didn't actually. Did you hit me? I did hit you. Oh, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel a thing. It does say harmless. Yeah. So I figured we'd have a little harmless fun. Yeah. Right. That's you, not so bad. Your Chihuahua Rango is like. Oh, I want some of this. <laughs> Okay, can Here, I try I'll it again? Even, I'll make myself broad so you can hit me. Okay. Don't get my eyes, though. All right. Oh, come on. <laughs> there oh, we yeah, go. It, I felt okay. it. I would say it only shoots about three feet. <laughs> about that. So you almost and need... we're going to have to be really careful about picking up all of these so we don't have a, a stinky studio later. <laughs> yes. What's that smell? It smells like rotting potatoes. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll shoot fun. the camera. What the hell, man? <laughs> Ooh, that would have been a good shot. <laughs> oh, mine's stuck. <laughs> Here, can I give it a go? <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. It's stuck in there, isn't it? How did I manage to do that? Luck, I guess. I even tried sucking it out. There we go. Oh, yay. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. <laughs> that was great. It went right over the camera. Yeah, that was perfect. Well, okay. Yeah, these, I think these are fun. I wonder if they're higher quality. Maybe. Yeah, than the, than the ones Amazon ones. On Amazon. <laughs> All right, that's that's it's the so best funny. $4.99 I've spent in a yeah. while. Yeah, I like that. I you think can't that's get anything fun. good for under five bucks these days, right? But yeah. Well, and just what wait, we could, we could take those for my family's uh, white white elephant gifts. Oh, let's do That'd it. That'd be fun. I'll clean them up and we'll, yeah. we'll put them back in the box. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll done. A, We're we'll already even done add our, a potato, our a gun and ammo. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Christmas shopping sorted. <laughs> love it. It does say ages eight and up yeah. if you're considering buying one of mm -hmm. these. Just don't aim for the eye. <laughs> Very space age looking, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they look good. They're pretty cool. I like the little fin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a sight? I suppose that's a sight. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Don't point it at the camera, Mike. All right. <laughs> well, that's our show. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Subscribe on YouTube, link and post. Thanks for letting us be a couple of immature adults who uh, <laughs> love dick jokes and shooting potato oh, guns at each other. <laughs> don't forget balls jokes. We had balls jokes oh, this episode, too. Oh, lots of balls too. jokes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Shannon, for those. Balls. <laughs> mm -hmm. And stay fresh cheese bags. <laughs>